Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Let me just get comfy because I might be sat here a while. So before we go into things, I just thought I would tell you what this video is about because it's a little bit different to what I usually do. Today we are going to be, I am going to be having a chat with you about my fitness journey. So this is a video that I probably should have filmed a long time ago. However, I didn't <laughs> so I thought I would film it now because I have a little bit of time Jacob's out with the boys I'm sat here alone so why not talk to myself um or talk to you um so basically I'm gonna take you way back and I'm basically going to chat about the last 10 years of my life um because I'm nearly 26 now and I first started getting into fitness when I was around about 16 um it has been a journey to say the least so I'm gonna take it way back when to when I was 16 years old and to be fair I was probably 15 because I was in year 11 but we're gonna start anyway so year 11 I will have been 15 years old and basically I was in that phase that most women my age will remember and it was called the tumblr phase so tumblr is kind of like as toxic as what TikTok can be right now. So back in the day, if you're not familiar with this, if you're from a younger audience or an older audience, Tumblr was basically like around before Instagram really became popular. And it was like the place where you would go to just kind of express yourself, um, be creative. Like I was an art student, so I was super creative. It was like my go-to, it was like Pinterest, but you could do whatever you want. And essentially with that came a space for a lot of people who had a lot of issues to also have a voice, which kind of made it a bit of a toxic place. So there was a lot of finspo, a lot of like skinny posts, um, a lot of like super triggering posts and a lot of posts that when your young impressionable woman makes you think, well, I don't look like that so I should be doing that and there was a lot of quotes that used to go around as well like of like a, like a Kate Moss quote that was like you'll never like nothing will ever taste as good as skinny feels and all that rubbish um and it was a big big space for like this kind of stuff and it was very 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 fashionable to be on tumblr and to be posting this kind of stuff so it came into my school like it probably went into any other school and a lot of girls were affected by it so it wasn't just me um i know quite a few girls in my friendship group um they found it twat they found it quite triggering as well and they also had like issues with um like self-harm um um, eat under eating like a, like some kind of substance abuse whatever it may be was definitely 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 influenced by this platform so because of this platform I went on a very 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 restrictive diet so we're talking about being 15 16 trying my hardest to eat nothing so I would literally go to school and I would not eat anything all day and then I would get home I would do like an hour of something called bloggy lattes um and then I would have um these locale pancakes which I'm not going to share the recipe for because it's ridiculous that I was trying to eat them as literally a meal and my only meal of the day and then I would go for a run it got to the point where I was that weak from running that I would literally just fall over so like my mum actually ended up coming in the car around with me a few times because the amount of times that I would go home like with cuts and bruises and my leggings would be ripped because I I was so weak because I didn't have any energy that I would literally just fall over and it got to the point where obviously like I said my mum was coming around with me in the car she didn't really know to what extent my kind of relationship with food had got if I was to go back now with obviously the resources that we have available to us I would definitely say that I did have some form of eating disorder whether that was like anorexia whether it was like I don't know like restriction because on a weekend I would um I would go out with my friends and I would eat and drink whatever so whether it was binging and restricting through the week I don't know but obviously back then as a young impressionable teenager I would definitely say there was some issues um obviously I 
went through a phase where I was vegetarian. At the time, I didn't even really like veg. It was just another way of excluding a food group and it really did hurt my family. Um, it got to the point where my art teacher actually spoke to my mum and said, something's going on here because Laura's, I, I did a project basically on, um, like obviously art was my form of expression and I did a project of like someone's body with like measuring tapes on them and like things that I didn't like about myself in the picture and just very tumblr -y. and my mum ended up sitting me down, thank god she did um, and I actually ended up having a chat with her about it, obviously I wasn't allowed to exercise in the living room anymore, um, I was like obviously made to eat and I did get better and then obviously I got into a relationship with someone and that always helps as well because obviously they encourage you to like go out on dates and do all that fun things so I did end up regaining some weight when it came to university I kind of slipped back into old habits though again so I wasn't intentional in doing it it was just with being a student um I didn't have much money <laughs> so obviously it was either a case of eat or go out and have drinks with your friends so I would just always pick to go out and have drinks with my friends and anyone that I went to uni with will tell you that I love shopping so I used to spend all my student loan on like clothes when I when it first came in I'd be like right cool top shop I'm going I'm getting x y and z and I used to spend all my money on clothes and then I would have no money left for like food <laughs> um or going out or doing whatever so i would literally just live off of super noodles and that was pretty much all i would eat and then as uni like carried on going obviously due to the fact that i wasn't really eating a lot the first year of uni i was quite underweight and then second year of uni when i got a job um that was when i had a little bit more money but by then i was very very social i was drinking a lot because obviously uni culture and once I started eating I was then in a calorie surplus so throughout the course of uni I actually wasn't exercising at all I was just living my best uni life I was going out with my friends um I still had these like moments where I would do some intense exercise or go on a crash diet but my relationship with food I would say was quite good I was eating I was enjoying myself I didn't really care um and throughout that time at uni, I actually went from being quite underweight at around about six and a half stone to being around about 11 stone at my heaviest. So coming out of uni, I was a bit of a drinker. I hand, hold my hands up, it was not ideal. Um, but coming out of uni, I realized that I really, really, really needed to just kind of get myself together. Like I felt just, icky like I can't explain it like I just felt I wasn't myself I was getting out of breath when I was going upstairs etc so I decided to get to the gym again I joined the gym and this was um around about April um so it'll be in April 2000 and mm, so I've oh dear I'm not good with dates but I joined the gym anyway and I started going to the gym and it was really 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 fun but I just couldn't get my head around it so like me I genuinely thought going to the gym was like death by cross trainer like I hated it like I was just doing loads of cardio I wasn't really lifting any weights and because of that I kept like having these spurts of motivation again so it wasn't really good and then I but I kept at it and I kept going and then come October um I come September sorry I started going to a personal trainer because my graduation was in November and I really, really, really wanted to look my best because at that point I felt like I was rock bottom. I was like, this is the worst I've ever felt. I was drinking a lot still. I was still eating crap and I knew that I didn't want to step on stage at graduation and look the way that I looked. Like I wanted to be able to look back on those pictures with my family and say, yeah, I did absolutely amazing. So I went to get a personal trainer she was amazing she obviously taught me how to lift which was life-changing but she didn't really help me with anything on the nutritional side which is why i swear by getting a coach because especially as a personal trainer myself as a pt there's not much that someone can help you with nutrition wise it is just a one-to-one -one session um and she helped me with the lifting but 
at that time I had no idea about the gym I well I had no idea about nutrition sorry the, all I knew about calories was how I'd restricted them in the past which had got me to lose lots of weight so I started a 1200 calorie diet with the end goal being I'm gonna diet I'm gonna lose 1000 I'm gonna lose and I was like I'm go I want to lose a stone in in two months so I went on a 1200 calorie diet and it was super 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 restrictive I some days I was eating 800 calories some days I was eating a thousand calories and I eventually did get down to the weight that I wanted to be for my graduation um for some reason like I don't even know how it happened but like the eight weeks were just a blur like I was doing stair master in the morning I was going to work I was training after work and because I was so busy I was forcing myself to be busy so that I wasn't hungry and it just the weight just completely fell off of me but then after my graduation I got so poorly um and this was around about the time that I started going out with Jacob so literally about a week after my graduation I got tonsillitis um, which was probably because I'd been restricting my body for so long, running off of lots of adrenaline. And then when it got to my graduation and, and it was over, that adrenaline obviously must have left my body. Um, and obviously fight or flight, etc. cetera, um, is like a, a, like a very intense thing. So my body was probably just so overwhelmed that I got really, really poorly. Um, I then lost even more weight because I was just obviously I couldn't eat anything I could barely drink anything I then got better for three weeks and then on the fourth week I got tonsillitis again so I lost even more weight and then so that was November the end of November and then the end of December I got tonsillitis again and then at the end of January I was meant to go on holiday with my friends to Poland I will still never ever ever live this down but like clockwork again bang four weeks later I actually got strep throat so throughout this time I was literally just constantly losing 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 whether or not I would have regained the weight after the um, 1200 calorie eight week stint I don't know but obviously due to the situation and due to me being poorly three to three months in a row I was just in such a frail way and I was very 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 lean and very 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 small and after that obviously my my knowledge of nutrition had kind of um like expanded because i realized like wow like what have i done to my body for me to be this poorly after just what i thought was just a normal diet so by that point um like come january end of january february time i really spent a lot of time researching what macros were researching what like nutrition information whatever i could find i was just like a sponge i was like i need all of this information i need to know how to do it properly because i don't want to be in a situation where i'm super super poorly because when i finally did go to the doctors for the last time the doctor said to me like if you hadn't have got here this is like super 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 infectious and you need to get antibiotics within the next couple of hours otherwise this could have progressed to um, sepsis which if you're not familiar with sepsis is basically a infection which gets into your blood screen bloodstream and it is very 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 deadly um so this whole experience had really really scared me and i made it my mission to learn as much as i could so that i because i the thing was i'd kind of, because i because of my past with restriction i'd kind of got into that mindset where i was like well I want to stay like this now but but how like how do I do that because I don't want to eat 1200 calories every day so I ended up going um on what I would only say now would be kind of like a reverse diet um reverse diet wasn't really a term that was used when I did this like it wasn't really something that oh, anyone ever talked about so me and Jacob who was then my boyfriend at the time we started slowly building up my calories Throughout this time, um, obviously, um, two months later, COVID happened. So at this point, I'd kind of gone through all of this phase and then COVID happened and I lost my job. So because of the experience that I had with getting poorly and losing weight too fast, I really, really, really wanted it to make it my mission that nobody ever did that again. So I was like, I want to help people do something that 
it's super super easy if you've got the right knowledge like if if there was a petition to get nutrition lessons to people in school oh my god i would sign it and i would give it to everyone that i know because nutrition is so important and it can literally kill you if you do something like what i did or even something different like it's so 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 important and i said to jacob when i lost my job i was like you know what i want to do something that's going to mean that no other girl or guy has to do what i did to get the results that they want i want to teach people that it can be sustainable it can be done so that is when i started doing my pt course um absolutely loved it it was so much fun i met so many amazing people luckily um for some reason the pt course that i did we were allowed to meet up in person because it was classed as education so that was really really good um and then coming out of the first lockdown the first uk lockdown by the way I'm, i was in uk at this time um, coming out of the first UK lockdown, I then launched Trained by Laura, which was what Elevate used to be called, um, my coaching company. So coming out of that lockdown, um, I had reversed my calories and I then launched, um, I'd, I'd started building my social media platforms and I launched Trained by Laura. But with that came um, a, big, a big shock. So obviously being in the fitness industry i'm sure if you're in the fitness industry and you know you were watching this being in the fitness industry comes with insane amounts of pressure so i basically felt like an imposter i was like i don't deserve to be here i've only been exercising realistically for like eight months so even though i had my stint when i was like 16 of doing god knows whatever um I'd only really been going into the gym and learning about nutrition and exercise for less than a year and I felt very out of my depth. I felt like anybody at any moment was going to call me out and be like, you're wrong. Even though I would always fact check everything, I was so scared that someone would just know that I was, wasn't was meant to be there, which is which is silly because I, I, I was meant to be there, um, but it was just a classic case of imposter syndrome. Um, basically because of that imposter syndrome I pretty much turned all that kind of like anxiety in on myself and I started um, a pretty severe diet again so I managed to get my calories up and then I was like no I need to be leaner everybody else in the fitness industry has got abs everybody else is lean I need to be like that too so I then went on another diet and during this time there was um like nothing open really gyms were the only things that were open the uk was only just coming out of lockdown um so me and jacob actually decided to go on a diet together because i had no idea like just how bad things were going to get he had no idea like we just was like while things are closed we may as well just diet um so we went on a diet and i can only explain it as genuinely during that time period i just don't even recognize myself like the way that i felt about myself about being around other people about seeing people that i love like i was genuinely scared to see my family because i was worried about that what they would think i looked like and that's kind of how much the imposter syndrome like manifested into me so like i had this thing where like if people asked me what i did I was scared to tell them that I was a coach because I thought they would look at me and be like like why are you a coach and due to this I took my diet too far again and unfortunately developed a binge eating disorder so throughout this time I was super super restrictive around about 1200 calories a day um binging on some days like 10,000 calories and J Jacob was at the um, working at a, a gym at the time so I would stick to my diet the whole time that we were together so like on his days off whatever it may be I would stick to that diet and then as soon as Jacob was gone it was like a monster had genuinely been like unleashed like it was intense like I was eating anything that I could find I was then holding loads and loads of water so then my body confidence was so low because I was I was starving all the time 
and I can only say that I experienced something called extreme hunger so towards the end when I realized like this is like this is too much like enough is enough like Jacob was so confused because I would I would walk past mirrors and I would literally just burst into tears um I couldn't look at myself I couldn't be around myself like I was disgusted in myself um and when I finally sat him down and explained what was going on um we then just decided that like we needed to take another approach um and I completely stopped tracking so what I did um is basically now what people refer to as the all-in method so I wasn't actually familiar with this when I did it but basically I just ate whatever I wanted to eat and stopped whenever I felt hungry whenever I felt full the first few weeks were really really tough because obviously with this you're going to find that you're gonna hold water your like your digestion is so bad because obviously you've been restricting for ages um but obviously it goes without saying because of restriction i had lost my period so at this point it was something where i was like no i need to i need to sort this out i need to get better and i don't want to lose my period because having had leukemia before my period is something that is so so precious to me just as it should be to any girl to be fair um, any girl woman whoever and it got to the point where I was like I'm very very scared that if I carry on doing this not just for my mental health but for my physical health this is going to be very very detrimental so I ended up just sacking in my fitness pal and doing what is now referred to as the all-in method so I was just eating and eating whatever I fancied and surprisingly I didn't even fancy things that were like chocolate crisps that kind of thing all I wanted was just some carbs so I always say like I just wanted a bagel or potato with my dinner or some pasta like I just wanted some carbs and because I'd been restricting them so much that I when I was binging I was reaching for anything but I wasn't getting satisfied because it wasn't the thing that I was reaching for so looking back now I realized that when I was binging I was just reaching for Nutella or um like pizza or cereal or whatever but I wasn't just having the things that I still wanted which was bagels um toast bread that kind of thing so that happened and around about six weeks later I can't even explain to you how much of a different person I was so I'd gone from four four months of restricting and binging to literally I regained I gained about seven pounds um and literally never felt better um from there i then made the decision to get a coach because i never wanted to i was scared to do it on my own i was like this is not something that i like i knew that i was wanted to take my fitness journey seriously but i knew that i couldn't do it on my own so at this point after i'd repaired my own relationship with food i didn't want to be I didn't want to do anything that was going to jeopardize that so I went and reached out to a coach and I went to my first ever coach um I then did my first ever building phase and then my coach guided me through my fat first proper fat loss phase so that was a fat loss phase where I didn't just slash my calories to 1200 like an idiot and I actually lost fat safely um and it was honestly like the best experience and that was over around about a year and a half and then when the um when I finished with my coach I then decided to eat intuitively for a bit so I basically spent around four months eating intuitively and then from eating intuitively I um now am on another fitness journey so yeah I feel like that was a bit of a ramble um that was kind of like a very brief version of my story I'm going to go into details like about every single part of it in like specific parts but essentially I just kind of wanted to do like a bit of an introduction into my fitness journey um I'm like I said going to go into detailed parts but that is just like an overview of kind of my relationship with food how my relationship with food has changed um where my relationship with food at, is at now honestly it could not be any better like I have no cravings for anything and I'm on a fat loss phase I don't even care about food like I could have it I couldn't have it like 
I used to I used to get like this is so stupid but I honestly used to fear like eating a meal because I thought if I eat that meal and then what if I what if that meal was better or like if me and Jacob were going out and he wanted to order something else it would genuinely make me anxious because I would think like well, what what if his meal comes and I want his meal and I used to tie so much thought into food and like food was such a big focus for me and now it's just not even something that I think about twice and honestly it is an amazing amazing feeling and I am very very lucky that I am now in a position where I can help people do that as well but if there's any part of my fitness journey that you want me to delve into a little bit more because I feel like I've been rambling a lot and I wanted to kind of like condense and I and make it short and I feel like in doing that I went la 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 so if I didn't go into much detail about one part of it please let me know because I am going to be splitting it into parts of more detail after this I'm going to be doing a little series but thank you so much for watching if you have any questions or anything my dms are always open on instagram please feel free to pop me a message and thank you for making it to the end of this video Mwah.